How you doing? Well, things are going good. What do we do? Praise the Lord. We're not going so good. What do we do? Praise the Lord. Take my heart, fill it 
with your love Shine your justice Bright as the noonday sun Lord, I love your ways Make me a faithful one Commit my way to you, oh Lord Help me to doesn't go through my head because uh, in challenging and rougher times you know we need the Lord all the more but he's always there for us right always there for us sometimes my life just don't make sense at all when the mountains look so big and my faith just seems so small Hold me, Jesus, I'm shaking like a leaf You have been king of my glory Won't you be my prince of peace? And I wake up in the night and feel the dark It's so hot inside my soul There must be blisters on my heart Jesus, I'm shaking like a leaf. You have been king of my glory. Won't you be my prince of peace? Surrender don't come natural to me. I'd rather fight you for something I don't really want than to take what you give that I need. And I beat my head against so many walls Now I'm falling down, falling on my knees And the Salvation Army Band's playing this hymn And your grace rings out so deep Makes my resistance seem so fair Singing, hold me, Jesus I'm shaking like a leaf You have been king of my glory Won't you be my prince of peace I'm singing hold me Jesus I'm shaking like a leaf You have been king of my glory Won't you be my prince of peace One more time, just you been king of my glory won't you be my prince never fear kids Jesus is always there for you God bless
Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Children's Bible Lesson for Calvary Old Bridge. Uh, parents, you should be joining us for this time together um, so that you can pause the video anytime that you want and discuss some of these uh, points with your children and then just restart the video. Um, but before we begin, if you can take a moment to look at the link beneath um, this video and you can print out the worksheet that we're going to be doing together as we go through the lesson, as well as um, you know, some puzzle sheets or coloring pages that we've put there for the children. Children, you should have a Bible with you. Um, if you don't have your own Bible, then mom or dad could let you use theirs or could read along with you. We're going to be uh, reading scripture together and then discussing the account of Moses, which we've been learning about for a number of weeks now because there's so much to learn about Moses and the time that the Israelites spent in Egypt and then when God brought them out of Egypt. So we have the pleasure of going over the final plague today. Uh, super excited part in the account of Moses and the Israelites. But take a moment, uh, parents, go ahead and pause the video if you need to. Print out those worksheets and the, um, the questionnaire that we're going to be going over together, uh, and then start the video up again when you're ready. Okay, so I'm going to get my glasses on and we're going to get started. We're going to open up in prayer together, ask the Lord to bless us as we go into his word today and we learn more about him. So dear Father, Lord, we thank you for this time that you've given us together. Thank you that even when we are at um, in a stay-at-home phase this year and uh, you know some of us are not able to go to church services, Lord, you let us gather together as a church body in our homes, in spirit with one another together to learn your word. And we just thank you so much for the opportunity. Bless us right now, Lord, as we learn more about you and as you teach us more about uh, this account in Egypt through the life of Moses. Thank you, Lord. So open your word to us. Help us to understand it and to learn more about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys, so together we're going to uh, go over the last part of the account of the plagues in Egypt. Okay, so last week in the last lesson that you guys did together, with the online Bible lesson, Moses and Aaron obeyed God. And that's one of the themes in this story that we want to take away from it is Moses obeyed God. You heard the account where Moses was afraid. He thought he couldn't do the job. He didn't speak well. He was afraid to go by himself. He was afraid the people wouldn't believe him when he told them that he had an experience with God, with the burning bush. He was afraid they wouldn't believe him. And he wanted God to send someone else instead of him. And then God had sent Aaron to go with Moses, you know, just to be that support for him and to help him accomplish this task that God has given him to do. So something we take away from this account in the Bible, God is always teaching us something. Whenever you read something in the Bible, God wants to teach you something. He wants you to, to read it um, and consider, you know, Am I like this? Do I have days when I'm afraid to do something, when I don't think that I have what it takes to get a job done that I've been given to do? Um, do I think that I'm just not uh, as equipped to do something as someone else might be who seems to be more talented or more gifted in that area? We've all gone through these thoughts as well. So we can relate to Moses in a lot of ways. And that's one of the things I love about this account in the Bible. So last time you guys were together last weekend, um, you read and you learned about the part where Moses and Aaron, they go to Egypt. You learned about all the plagues that, that the Egyptians and the, and the Israelites experienced. A lot of the plagues God protected the Israelites from. Those are his people. The plagues were not meant to punish the Israelites. They were meant to punish Egypt. So God allowing this to happen, God sending these plagues on Egypt wasn't just to make Pharaoh let his people go. The plagues were meant as a punishment on Egypt for how they've treated God's people for years and years and years, decades. A decade is 10 years, multiple decades that the Israelites were in Egypt as slaves. They were mistreated badly by the Egyptians. The Egyptians. So these plagues that God sent were for two reasons. One of them was to punish Egypt for their treatment of God's people God's holy people, and then also as a means to make Pharaoh let God's people go. One, one plague after another, horrible plagues, until we're going to hear today what happens with the final plague. Okay, so you learned last week about, uh, you heard the phrase, a hardened heart, and you should um, 
Remember what God said is a hardened heart. It's kind of an odd phrase. We don't really use that phrase today in 2020, but it basically means a rebellious heart against God, a disobedient heart that doesn't want to listen to God, doesn't want to do what God wants that person to do. They have a hardened heart against God. This is Pharaoh. Pharaoh doesn't want to obey God. He doesn't want to obey Moses and Aaron. He doesn't want to obey what clearly this God of the Israelites is telling him to do. He's being disobedient right? Okay, so that's a hardened heart. And sometimes we have hardened hearts against God. You know, um, that kind of thing can happen. Like I said, if God wants you to do something, you know, we can harden our hearts against God. We don't want to do something and we ignore that he's asking us to do something. We know what the right thing to do is, but we're not going to do it. We don't want to be uncomfortable. Um, you know, we don't want to do something that, uh, you know, is going to get us out of that comfort zone that we like to sit in. So sometimes we can have a hardened heart against God, but thankfully, you know, he ministers to us in those moments and helps us to come to a place where we do the right thing. That's the prayer, right? Okay, so let us go into scripture. We are going to be in the book of Exodus. So that's right in the beginning of the Bible, the book right after Genesis. So turn to the book of Exodus. We're going to start in chapter 12, and I'm going to read to you. Um, we're going to start in verse number three, and we're going to go through verse 14, okay? If you have to pause the video, go ahead and find that chapter in Exodus, and then start the video again when you're ready, um, and I'm going to begin reading, okay? Okay, verse three in the book of Exodus chapter 12. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day, this is the Lord speaking to Moses, that on the 10th day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for every household. There are tens of thousands of Israelites in Egypt, a lot of people. Every single household is to take a lamb, right? Um, for his family, one for each household. Verse four, if any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor. Everyone has to have a lamb. Um, to represent their family in the sacrifice that they're supposed to do. Okay, so they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people that there are. You're to deter you are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be a year old. God's giving his guidelines now for what he requires for that lamb, not just any old lamb, Let's listen to what God says about this lamb that they're supposed to choose for their home. One year old without defect. That means no spots, a perfect lamb. Nothing, um, you know, no markings on it, no injury. Um, you know, the lamb is supposed to be perfect, a perfect lamb, okay? Without defect. And you may take them from the sheep or the goats. When goats have little baby goats, you know, um, they're allowed to use those. The sheep have their baby sheep. The lamb, they're allowed to use that. So from the sheep herd or the goat herd, they're allowed to take this perfect lamb from. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. So you kill the lamb. That's how they, they would sacrifice them. Okay. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and on the tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night, they are to eat the meal roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. We're going to talk about this. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roast it over the fire, head, legs, and inner parts. Do not leave any of it until morning. If some of it is left until morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Recognize that phrase? Okay. On that same night, I will, I will, the Lord says, pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn. We're going to talk about that. Both men and animals. And I will bring judgment on all the gods, little g, of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, this is the Lord speaking, 
when he passes through Egypt, he says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. I will pass over that home. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate, meaning doing it every year, having this meal to remember this event. It, it is to, I'm sorry, um, you are to commemorate for the generations to come. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. Woo, that was loaded. Okay, so let's talk about this. So God is telling them, prepare a meal. Prepare a meal. You are going to slaughter a perfect lamb, one for every household. That's thousands of lambs. And I know what you're thinking, Miss Carrie. That's gross because they're talking about that, you know, take the blood from the lamb, wipe it on the around the door of the home on the outside to put the blood around the door. Do we do this today? Has your family ever done this? My family has never done this. Do you know why we don't do this today? Clearly God is telling his people to do this. Are we not God's people? Why don't we do this today? Because we had a perfect lamb. We have a perfect lamb in Jesus Christ. He, when he died on the cross, we call him the Lamb of God. He was the final sacrifice. All these times that the Israelites were told to sacrifice a lamb, um, you know, God allowed other animals for families that were too poor, maybe didn't have a lamb, they could, they could use, you know, other types of animals instead. God gave this commandment, but when Jesus died on the cross, he was our final lamb. When he died, it was for everyone, for all time, for all years to come. Here we are 2,000 years later, and his blood from that sacrifice still, still covers our sins today. It still counts. We don't have to sacrifice lambs today. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad your family doesn't, doesn't have to do that like the Israelites had to do this? So they have a meal every year called the Passover meal. It's a holiday, if you will, or a festival where they have this meal to remember what God did on this night. So let's talk about it, okay? So he gives them all the rules for what, to, and we talked about that, perfect lamb. Put, spreading the blood over the door for their dwelling. So the Lord, when he sees, okay, this home has blood over their door, those are my people. I'm going to pass over that home. But a home that did not have the blood spread around their door, that was a home of an Egyptian family. Then he went in and, and he took, you know, the life of the firstborn. So, you know, I have three brothers. I have a sister. I was born right in the middle. I'm the third born. I have two older brothers. So if I was in this Egyptian family in, in Egypt and, the, and I didn't have that blood covering my doorpost, then my oldest brother would have been one whose life was taken because he's the firstborn in my family. Do you understand? So the firstborn, also with the animals, firstborn animal. Okay. It's a horrible, it's, it is the most horrible of the plagues that God allowed. Do you not agree? You know, remember all the other plagues that God allowed? He turned the water to blood, the river water into blood. The frogs, the frog plague, the frogs were everywhere. Can you imagine? Um, gnats, flies, boils, sores on the Egyptian skin, including Pharaoh, don't forget. Um, locusts in the air, darkness, we learned about that as well. All these plagues that, um, that God sent on Egypt, this, do you not agree, is the worst. Taking the life of the Egyptian people, the, the oldest born in every single household, every single household losing somebody, um, horrible. But Pharaoh had hardened his heart against God. If he had let God's people go sooner, he wouldn't have experienced this particular plague, right? God had to do this because Pharaoh hardened his heart against God. Okay, so I'm looking at my notes real quick because you have your notes in front of you and we're going to do them together. Okay, so let's look at question number one. What does the Bible call Pharaoh's stubborn heart? We talked about this just now. God called his heart what? It's a phrase we don't really use today. He had a blank heart against God. What do you think? A, obedient, B, hard, C, loving, or D, black? 
That's right. B, hard. He had a hard heart against God, a hardened heart against God, um, was not obedient. Number two, what animal did the Israelites have to sacrifice in order to protect themselves from the 10th plague? This is the 10th plague, right? A, a bull. B, a frog. There were plenty of frogs. C, a pig. Or D, a lamb. What do you think? What did the people have to prepare and sacrifice in order to be protected from this plague? The Israelites. D, a lamb. Excellent. Just circle the letter D. Okay. So let me go forward. That was question number two. Number three, what were the Israelites commanded to do with the animal's blood? Remember what I told you? What did they have to do? Did they have to A, spread it on their doorposts? B, pour it on the ground? C, burn it with fire? Or D, collect it in a bowl? A, very good. Remember, they painted around their doorposts on the outside door and, and the Lord would see that and pass over their home. That's why they called it Passover. Question number four, what is the name of the meal that reminded the Israelites of the 10th plague? This festival that they're supposed to do now each year following this event. What do you think they called that? What did God call this festival that they are to do? A, fast food. Who wrote this? B, Hanukkah. Have you heard of Hanukkah? C, Thanksgiving, or D, Passover. What do they call this holiday they're going to have every year now, even to this day? Passover. Excellent. You guys are too smart. Question number five. What else did the Israelites eat with their lamb? Look in verse number eight. Do you want me to read that to you? Okay. Let's look at verse number eight. That same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with... Bitter herbs. Sounds yummy, doesn't it? Bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. That's another lesson talking about that. Hopefully we'll get to do that together. So let's go back to our question. What else did the Israelites eat with their lamb? A, bread and milk. B, unleavened bread and bitter herbs. C, bitter herbs and fish. D, veggies and dip. What did they eat with it? I practically gave it to you. Did you guess it? B, unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Circle that. Okay. So, unleavened bread. Do you want to learn about what that is? Let's talk about that for a second. Unleavened, unleavened bread is called matzah. Can you say that? Matzah. Okay. Matzah has no leaven in it. Leaven is an ingredient that they add to the dough when they're making a loaf of bread, and it makes the dough rise. Do you ever see that? It's kind of cool. Makes the bread, the dough, rise. It takes time. They leave it out, and it rises, and then they put that in the oven. They bake it, and it stays risen, and it makes that beautiful loaf. So what do you think would happen if they made this dough to make bread, but they didn't put the leaven in it? If the leaven is what makes it rise, what would happen to the bread if there was no leaven in it? It just stays flat. Do you ever have like a pita, a sandwich with a pita um, as the bread? That's exactly what that's like. It just is bread that has not risen and does not have leaven in it. In the Bible, what God teaches us is as an example, he says that the leaven is like sin in our life. So imagine that you are that lump of dough. That's you, okay? You put a little leaven in that. Let's say that that's sin in our life. A little leaven affects the whole lump of dough will rise. It'll be affected by that little bit. And certainly if there's a lot of leaven, right? So God likens leaven to sin in our life. He uses that as an example of what is it like when you have sin in your life? Well, it's like, you know, dough that has leaven. So the Israelites would not add leaven to that dough, okay? And they'll in it and it bakes flat. Okay, so I only went a little into left field with that. So here we go. So number in my notes because the Israelites would leave. Okay, also I should mention here because I'm looking at my notes while I'm teaching as well, is that the Israelites would be leaving Egypt in a hurry <laughs> because God is preparing them to leave Egypt. And it wasn't going to be something where you prepare for a week like you're going on a big trip. 
they're going to get the word time to go and it's out the door. So the unleavened bread was make the bread quickly, have it ready. There's no time to wait for it to rise with leaven in it. There's no time. It's time to go. Put it in the oven, bake it so you have some bread to go. So God was preparing them to leave quickly. Um, so the unleavened bread served that purpose as well on this particular night in God's history. Okay, so um, let's look at the class notes again. I am on, I want to say question number six already. Are we on six already? Wow. Okay, we're, we're trucking right along. What did God see? What did God see that made him pass over the houses of the Israelites during the 10th plague, which is the one that we're learning about right now? Um, what did he see? What what sign did he tell them to give him? Now listen, God knows everything. Did he know which homes the Israelites lived in? Yes, they're his people. He made us. He knows everything about us. He's with us all the time. So it's not like God was like, oh my goodness, how am I going to know which houses they are? I better have them give me a sign. It's more a symbolic thing. It's representative of what will save them. And in God's history, when we go into the New Testament, you know, this whole example is fulfilled in, in Jesus Christ on the cross. Okay. Um, parents, a great conversation point to follow up on after we're done with this lesson today. All right. So here we go. Number six um, is what did God see? So A, blood on the doorposts. B, fires burning. C, lights on the windows or in the windows. Or D, people standing in the doorway. What was the sign? You're too smart. Like, you didn't even have to think about that. Absolutely. Um, it's A, blood on the doorposts. Okay. So moving forward, question number seven is what happened during the 10th plague? Well, like, what was it? What happened? What was the plague? Right? We talked about this. A, it got dark for three days. B, every firstborn son and animal of Egypt died. C, God destroyed all the Egyptians. D, Prisoners were set free. <laughs> These are exciting options, but there's only one. That's the true one, right? So what happened during the 10th plague? B, right? Every firstborn son and animal of Egypt died. Okay. All right. So remember that with each of these plagues, don't forget that in Egypt, they worshipped many gods. Little G, right? We only capitalize big G for our God. Uh, but these gods in, in Egypt, the Egyptians worshipped through these plagues that God sent, that their false gods, their pretend make-believe gods that they worshipped, were they able to stop the plagues? When they were praying to their gods, did their gods stop the plagues that God sent? Did they have the power to stop them? Why not? What do you think? There's only one true God, one real God, who sits on the throne in heaven, and that is God the Father. We have God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The gods that Egypt worshipped aren't real gods. So when they would pray to them, no one heard them. There were no gods receiving those prayers because they weren't praying to the one true God, right? The God that we pray to. Does someone hear when we pray to our God? Yes. What does God say in his word? He commands his angels concerning you when you pray. When you pray, God hears you and he commands his angels concerning your prayers. You pray to him, God, I'm afraid right now. He will send his angel down to comfort you and to, and to help you to feel brave because he's going to help you go through that thing that you're afraid of. God hears our prayer. They're gods, false gods. So their prayers didn't really go to anybody, did they? Right? Thank God we serve a true living God and he hears our prayers. Okay, so here we go. Um, God was demonstrating his power over the false gods. A really good point for us to remember. Let's go back to the class notes. Question number eight. Ready? Um, in the 10th plague, who did God show his power over? Was it over Aaron? Letter A. Remember Aaron, Moses' helper? Was it B, Moses? Did God show his power over Moses? C, was God showing his power over Pharaoh? D, 
over Ra, which is one of their gods. A point to consider before you answer this one. In Egypt, they believed that the person who became Pharaoh was a god. You sat on that throne, you, you um, sat as ruler over Egypt as Pharaoh, you were considered a god, right? So when God sent these, when the true God sent these plagues on Egypt, who is he showing his power over? Not just Pharaoh the man, Pharaoh the god, right? That the people thought that he was a god. God was showing authority over anyone that anyone calls a god who is a false god, right? Okay. Let us move forward. Here we go. So I'm going to read in Exodus chapter 12, 29 through 34. All right, so go ahead and go. We're going to go back to the Bible right now. 29 through 34. Are you ready? I'm not ready yet. Okay, I'm ready. Are you ready? Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. And when you enter the land that the Lord will give you as he promised... Observe this ceremony. Keep having this Passover feast every year to remember what the Lord has done. Um, and when your children ask you, what does the ceremony mean to you? Tell them. It is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. And then the people bowed down and they worshiped. The Israelites did just what the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. Okay, back to my notes here. We're reading all the way to 34, verse 34. Let's continue on. Um, at midnight, I'm in verse 29. Took me a second to find it. I'm on verse 29. At midnight, the Lord struck down. Here's when, here's now the plague is hitting now. Ready? So, you know, it's nighttime. In Egypt, everyone's in their home. All right. At midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh, Pharaoh's son. From the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on the throne to the firstborn of the prisoner to the lowliest of the lowest person in Egypt. Um, he struck the firstborn who was in the dungeon and the firstborn of all the livestock he struck down as well. Pharaoh and all his officials and all the Egyptians got up during the night and there was a loud wailing, crying out in anguish in Egypt. For there was not a single house um, without someone dead. During the night, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Up! Leave my people, you and the Israelites, go. Worship the Lord as you have requested. Take your flocks and your herds as you have said and go. And also, bless me. This is the Lord speaking. Um, I'm, I beg your pardon. This is Pharaoh speaking to Moses and Aaron, basically saying, get out of my country because of this horrible plague that just hit. Pharaoh's like, go, go, take your people, go, take your livestock, go, go. He doesn't want God to strike them with another plague. That one finally worked. Pharaoh's son was taken as well. Um, his life was taken. So... The Egyptians urged the people to hurry and leave the country. The Egyptian people were like, get out of our country, you Israelites. Take you and your God, go. Um, for otherwise, they said, we will all die. So the people took their dough before the yeast was added, remember? Um, and they carried it on their shoulders in kneading troughs wrapped in clothing. Okay, so we learned about what plague God was going to put on, on Egypt. We learned what happened. We learned that um, how they were to protect their homes, to protect them from that plague, that God would see the blood on the mantle of the door pass over that home. Um, and then we learned how with that particular plague, Pharaoh's own son, his firstborn, um, his life was taken in that plague along with um, one person in every single household, there was a death in the Egyptian um, nation. Uh, everybody except the Israelites, they were protected from this plague. And so Pharaoh said, take your people, go, get out of my country. So it worked, right? So Pharaoh finally 
obeyed, finally let God's people go. Um, and they hurried. Before the dough had risen, remember? They took the dough with them, uh, and they hurried, and they left. Okay. Our time is up. But I'm going to quickly make sure that we don't that we cover everything that we need to cover. Okay. Um, so the Passover. Who was the Passover lamb? Remember, they had to slaughter a, a perfect lamb. Who was that a picture of? Or who did that remind you of? Right? A Jesus. B Moses. C God. Or D. Pharaoh. Remember we talked about this? That's right. Letter A. Jesus, the Lamb of God. He's the one who, um, it was the final sacrifice given um, for God's people. And we're God's people. We are grafted into God's family. Um, you know, we might not be from Israel, uh, but we are grafted in as Gentiles uh, through Christ's um, plan for salvation. Okay. So, we need to we need to wrap this lesson up for today. I could go on and on, right? Could we go on and on talking about Moses? But we are at thirty minute mark, and I'm a little over. But I enjoyed learning about this account with you. I enjoyed talking about Moses with you. There's a lot to take away from it, parents. What a great account! Just to sit for another, you know, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, uh, just talking about the different points in this account about Moses and the people of Israel and the people of Egypt and Pharaoh. Um, but the takeaway from it. You know, God is always protecting us. God is always with us. God always knows what's best for us. You know, he sent this plague, these plagues on Egypt to punish them for their treatment of God's people. Um, just know that God is on your side. And if you're afraid of something that God has given you to do, he's with you. He was with Moses. He sent Aaron with him. He had mercy on him. Uh, sent Aaron with him to help him complete this task, one of the greatest tasks given in the Bible. One of. There are many. This is one of. So I enjoyed learning about this with you. I hope that um, we can talk more about Moses when we come together again. I'm not sure if um, we're going to continue on. I, I have to see where we're going from here in our lessons. But I do hope we get to talk about Moses some more because he's one of my favorite uh, people in the Bible. So God bless you. God bless your family. Enjoy the day. And until we get together again, the Lord bless you.